Hi guys, I'm Ujuswini and you are live with First Post. Today we have with us two very very inspirational and strong women. We have with us uh, Shaeshta Vaz who is the first female pilot from Afghanistan to fly a solo flight and now she is also on a world tour and that's why she is with us in India. We also have with us Neelu Khatri who has been in the Indian Air Force for 15 years and now she is the president of Honeywell's Aerospace which is inspiring a lot of young people to take up their aspirations and fly high. So let's begin the conversation. Welcome to First Post. Thank you. Uh, so tell us something about your journey. As I was reading about you, I got to know that uh, you're from Afghanistan and you were born in a refugee camp and you were only three months old when your family moved to America. I'm sure it won't have been easy for you, but how did you get into aerospace, uh, this flying, how did you get into aviation? Tell us about your journey. So thank you for having me here. And uh, I, like you mentioned, I was born in a refugee camp in Afghanistan. My family went to the United States when I was barely a year old. And I grew up thinking I was going to have a very traditional Afghani woman's life, which is have children at a young age, or get married at a young age, have children, and be a housewife. But I found something that made me really inspired, that made me really happy, and it made me feel like I had a sense of purpose, which is flying. And through many different challenges and, and many different sacrifices, I was able to become a commercial pilot, and now I'm flying around the world to show young girls that uh, really you can come from any background. If you apply yourself and you work hard, you can be me flying around the world. That's a really inspiring story. Uh, Neelu, moving on to you. So, uh, she has started her own organization called Dream Soar, which is uh, inspiring many, many young people, uh, many young women to take up a career in aviation. And uh, you are the president of Honeywells. So, just tell us something about how they intermingle, how your objectives come together, and how you are sure, doing sure. this. I think it's all about you know a passion for uh, aerospace, and Honeywell is all about aerospace. Uh, you know, we are very passionately support the STEM program, which is science, technology, engineering, and math, and uh, that's where uh, you know Shaista yeah. and uh, she's doing a great yeah. job going across the world and. Diversity candidates, which we should be coming up on, on STEM programs. I mean, and Honeywell could never be less passionate on anything to do with aerospace. Yeah. So, Shaista, and the same question for you the other way around. How do you think Honeywell has uh, actually uh, helped Dream Soul, that is your organization? So you can see on my flight suit, Honeywell, <laughs> which yeah. I'm very proud. It's yeah, on see it, guys. That's <laughs> Yeah, But even more so, I'm very happy and honored to be here with the president of Honeywell from India. Um, you know, many people have dreams, and, and there are so many nonprofit organizations out there. Dream Store, our sole mission is to inspire the next generation of science, technology, engineering, and math professionals. And how we are doing this is... As I travel around the world, I'm stopping, visiting children, visiting schools, and yeah. telling them about STEM. Yeah. Children nowadays have a very vague idea what STEM education is all about. Yes. But through this trip, I hope to broaden their, their perception. Introduce them to the concept of, of STEM. Yes. So with Honeywell, they are STEM. They are the aerospace the aviation industry, I mean, everything that they do encompasses STEM education. So, Honeywell came on board to support DreamSoar, and because of their gener generous support, I now have Wi Fi on board my airplane, which allows me to use technology and science to c stay connected with loved ones, with followers, with uh, the world as I'm flying around the world. Yeah, we were just joking around a little while, you know, on her solo journey. Yeah. And we said, you know, Honeywell probably did not leave her solo. She's pretty well connected even when she was on the yeah. solo journey. 
so uh, you have uh, been if i'm right in the first batch of women commissioner officers right which is a great achievement and uh, we are proud to have you with us uh, you have served in the air force for 15 years so you definitely started much uh, back in time and uh, it was even more difficult for women then and to for women to pursue a career in aerospace so how do you see the difference how has it changed has it not changed how do you see from the time you started to today's where she is uh, doing the same on the same same path sure i mean i'm talking about the early 90s when i was in college and looking at a career i mean in those days the moment you turned something on 20s early the only thing you could do is you know get married and uh, you know look at uh, starting a family exactly at what she's saying so many years later yeah. so i could you know resonate with what your thoughts were uh, i think at that point of time because women were coming very new in the defense forces yeah. uh, the primary thing was uh, you know will they be able to get in and merge with the mainstream yeah. uh, now 22 or 23 years later you know we are fighting different battle on can you give them permanent commission can you give them bring them uh, you know in fighter planes as yeah. pilots yeah. not just as a you know support or a, a helicopter pilot or a transport pilot and we saw some new Uh, lady officers getting commissioned recently yeah. i mean uh, all over the world if you see you know uh, women typically uh, from countries like india and afghanistan you know we are pretty uh, you know from the mindset of diversity is not very difficult different yeah so we have we have uh, from the indian perspective we have definitely come a long way girls are smarter yeah. stem is definitely not a very um, i would say uh, exclusive yeah. thing in india Uh, we yeah. do have a lot of women getting into uh, engineering and following their passion it's all about retaining them in these stem uh, careers that's more challenging in a country yeah. like india and uh, this would be the serious thing uh, can you also share some fun memories that you still cherish from that time oh many many fun memories i think uh, the one fun memory i have is you know uh, when you were in defense forces you were used to the juniors uh, you know saluting you a uh, jai hind yeah. uh, every time you walk up and there was this one moment when i passed by and uh, you know uh, a tall 6 footer guy who was a sergeant did not salute me and you know as yeah. a young officer i always said oh how dare he did not salute me and not <laughs> respect me enough yeah. and i went and reported and later i learned that he did not salute me because he was so odd to see a woman officer Um, but he just completely forgot to salute yeah. also <laughs> so it was not his really oh, fault <laughs> yeah and the same question to you you have had a heck of a journey and uh, some fun filled memories that you want to share like maybe some something from the time you first the first flight you flew something from that time absolutely i mean it's uh you know i landed at an airport uh <laughs> and i got out of the plane <laughs> and and one of the customs officer was like hey where's the pilot yeah. you know yeah. so it's moments like that where you just have to yeah. smile and say you know i am the pilot i am the <laughs> pilot yep um, but but it's moments like that that makes you excited for the future it makes you excited that you know women we are there yeah. we are participating and and soon enough in a matter of time Yeah. It's going to be so normal to see a woman in uniform or a woman as a pilot yeah. that you it just won't even phase you. It definitely I guess makes you more stronger because not getting the salute and not being identified as the pilot that <laughs> definitely. So that's a very inspiring story guys. So even if and it uh, definitely teaches us how even if you're not recognized, you know, make it a fun memory that yeah. we can learn from them. And uh, Yeah apart from that uh, I heard that you have a very amazing playlist so tell us something about oh, that Oh wow <laughs> you know it's just music I have songs that are from Afghanistan I have music that's from all over the world oh, You should add In some Indian place. songs as well I I will I will <laughs> You know, actually, I do have a favorite Indian song. I used oh. to listen to it a long time ago. Which one? Uh, it was called. Um, it was in the movie. It was called Pukar. Pukar. It was. Yeah, uh, yeah. I can't remember the name, <laughs> but I used to dance to it because it was. 
it's very festive and and um, okay. but yeah, my playlist is is everywhere and and music inspires me and there's something about being in the airplane, flying, and looking out and just being in tune with the flight and with music. So, as I, I did a radio interview this morning and yeah. probably the one song that defines my the chapter that I'm in in, in my life journey is "Adventure of a Lifetime" by Coldplay. Coldplay because yeah. this really is an adventure of a lifetime yeah. and it just the words I connect to it really well right now and um, how do you see with Honeywells and otherwise how do you see the future of aviation in India especially for women I think future of aviation in India definitely is uh, extremely exciting at this point of time primarily uh, you know you have the number of aircrafts flying uh, the connectivity is going great uh, and uh, you have women who are educated smart uh, yeah. engineering uh, and of course uh, trying to achieve what they want to yeah. and uh, the beautiful part about the indian scenario is that you have the infrastructure the family support yeah. you know for women to uh, 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 you know reach up where they want to yeah. Uh, you already have, uh, you know, women pilots in uh, private airlines, in uh, in the uh, in, uh, Air India, in defence, in naval the, uh, aerospace. I mean, uh, the yeah. army, they are all there everywhere. So yeah. it's pretty exciting, and I, I I feel very proud when I see a young pilot greeting me on Certainly. a plane, saying, you know, I'm going to Certainly. take you from place yeah. A to place B. These yeah. are exciting times. And you must have also like her travelled across the world, so. any specific like she said she has a thing for an indian song something from another culture that you really adopted to during your you know flights abroad something like that i think i am extremely amazed at various cultures everywhere yeah. you go the while the baseline would always be the same the family values whether it's west or so yeah. north or east you know yeah. the basic family ties are pretty much similar right. you know we are right. all worried about our nearby uh, uh, family members uh, what impresses me is uh, definitely the subtle difference in every culture i'm yeah. extremely interested in that i love to talk to people and understand yeah. what they follow and how they Uh, you know, perceive. Yeah. Uh, and your life. career must have given you a lot of chances. A lot of chances, that. yes. That's great. That's one of the best thing that I like about my career. And on you, like, how long have you been in India? Like, for how many days have you been here? I've actually been here for only two days. <laughs> oh, okay. But it's been so much events, people, yeah. the warmth. I feel like I've been here for a while. <laughs> Have you tried any Indian food? Yeah, Something absolutely. you liked? <laughs> I did. The flavors in the masala is just mind blowing. You know, yeah. sometimes th- we incorporate Indian flavors in Afghani food, but it's yeah. unlike anything here, yeah. actually, in India, eating these spices. And what do you think? Uh, how do you see for, especially for women from Afghanistan? Uh, and as of course, you have set an example for them. how do you think is their future in aviation i think it's uh there's a lot of potential yeah. there's a lot for growth and um you know how i see a young girl from afghanistan is the same way that i see a young girl from india or africa yeah. Yeah. you know we are all women we are all yeah. human yeah. and um i i i i was recently in kabul and i i i could see a lot of young girls that were very passionate but they don't have a place to go to to learn yeah. to to set their skills um into some some sort of a project so it's part of my plans to go and and open maybe a stem school or do something for those girls and and i even see in the future a partnership between afghanistan and india you know where whether we bring girls from india to afghanistan for a cultural experience or vice versa yeah. or if the girls team up and work on a stem related project yeah. i mean the possibilities are endless okay. um so yeah um we have a large audience of uh, young men and women on first post so a special message you want to give to all those young people out there about their dreams how they dream something out of the box and they always scared to actually pursue it a message you would want to give them so my message to everyone that's watching just look around yourself everything that you see was created by someone's dream by someone's vision 
And if they didn't execute on that, you wouldn't have it in front of you. So go out there, your most wildest, scariest, exciting dream in the world, go out there and pursue it, work hard. Yeah. There will be days where you're gonna wanna give up and say, Halas, I'm done, this is too, too much work, but don't give up. And it is because I didn't give up that I'm flying around the world and doing things that I love, which is inspiring the next generation. Yeah. So work hard, make those sacrifices, and dream big. Yeah, that's a beautiful advice and something you would say. You yeah. are more accustomed to how girls are here, the problems we are facing, How? what is your inspirational message to them? Yeah, I think I feel very blessed to be born in India and be a part of the times when I had support from the families yeah. and that I see now as well. I think it's amazing to see Indian families sacrificing their annual holidays for sake of their children, sending them to schools. Yeah. And those are the things that I consider that is blessing for the younger generation, the amount of effort their parents do. So, you know, you already have a great backing. You just need to then fly high, you know. As she said, you know, dream big. Yeah. Dream, uh, dream of things that you want to do, you're very passionate about. And then put in an effort. The younger generation probably do not understand the meaning of putting in an effort with consistency. Any uh, story that you see, whether it's the fastest man running on the earth, you look at that nine or ten seconds. Yeah. Look at the, uh, you know, the hard work that goes to prepare that nine or ten seconds by the fastest runner on the earth. I think never forget that. That's my message. That's a great message. Thank you so much, Nilu. Thank, thank you, Shaikha. Uh, thank you, guys, for watching. And we'll come up with some more great interviews. Keep watching first post. Thank you. Thank you.